Mike, can you drop these road designs off at the client's office? Of course, but I need directions. Sure. You take the freeway south, then you get off on exit twenty onto Highway Nine. All right.、Uh, is it off the highway? No, not quite. Next, you turn right onto Green Avenue. Got it. Right onto Green, then. You turn left onto Washington Street. It's a dead end. The client is at the end of Washington. Okay, I'll head out now. John, your team is going to clear the roadway on First Street. Okay. What do we need to do? First, move any big objects off the roadway. No problem. And after that, clear the storm drains of leaves. That way, water can flow into the sewer. Sounds good. I'll go get things started. Wait, don't forget to clear the gutters too. If you don't, the drains will just get clogged again. Of course. Mr. Larson, can we talk about the highway project? Of course, Miss Jessop. What is it? Will Will you be able to meet your August the twenty ninth deadline? I think so. We're close. I saw the new dividers and guardrails. What else needs to be done? A few things. We still have to repave some lanes. I see. That was supposed to be done by June the tenth. What happened? Our paver broke down. It took a long time to fix it. Miss Reed, I have an idea for the intersection of Tenth Street and Route Nine. Sure, James. What is it? Well, the plan calls for a four-way stop. Yes, that's correct. I think that will slow down traffic. It will, but there's no room for a roundabout there. I know, but I think we could fit a jug handle. You know, that's a good idea. Let's take another look at the plans. Sheila, I got an email from our client. Oh yeah, what was it about? He'd like to use some recycled materials for the road project. Okay, we should be able to do that. Do you have any ideas? Well, we could mix rubber from old tires into the asphalt. Yes, that would reduce the road's noise. Or we could mix in some fly ash to the concrete portions. Good idea. I'll let the client know these options. Kate, will you take a look at this order? Sure. What's up? It's this bill. It's way too high. Really? We ordered six tons of gravel. It goes for twenty dollars per ton. Six times twenty is one hundred twenty. Yeah, but the total came to one hundred fifty. Hmm. Did you remember to add shipping costs? Oh no, I forgot. That's it then. The total was one hundred twenty for the gravel plus thirty for shipping. So we're preparing to build a five-mile stretch of road. Great. I'm sorry, but I'm still getting used to the imperial system. Five miles is how many kilometers? It's about eight kilometers. Okay, and it's twenty-four feet wide, so that's somewhere around seven meters. Yes, it's about seven and a half meters wide. Thanks. We're going to need a lot of asphalt. Yes, by my calculations, we'll need seven thousand seven hundred and forty short tons. That's just under seven thousand metric tons. Well, let's order now so we can start on time. Lisa, do you have a second? Yeah, sure. What do you need? I'm breaking some concrete, but I'm pretty tired from using this sledgehammer. Did you want me to take a turn? No, thanks. I was hoping you'd track down a jackhammer. Oh, I think there's one in the truck. Great. Can you make sure? Yeah, I'll run down there now. So, Jacob, you'll start work on Monday. Do you have any questions? Just one. Do I need to bring any equipment to the job site? Just a few things. You'll have to bring steel toe boots for one. That's no problem. Good. You'll also need some leather gloves. That's fine. Will the company provide me with a hard hat, goggles, a face shield, and stuff like that? Bring a hard hat, but we'll give you the other things. Mr. Clark, what should the crew work on today? Well, first I need you to gather a group and start clearing the area. All right, I'll have some of the guys remove the debris. Good. Then we need to mark off the boundaries of the new lane. Of course, I can start on that right away. Great. Next, make sure that all the gravel is unloaded correctly. Okay, got it. Great. After that, we're ready to spread it. 
Gary, let's go over the tasks for the week. OK, Mum. What are we going to do? We'll mainly be levelling ground for a new lane on a road. So we'll need the grader and bulldozer then? Yes. We'll probably want the backhoe too. No problem. It has a loader on its front end too, right? Yes. That'll save us having to bring another vehicle. Good idea. I'll go get the equipment ready. How is everything coming along, Daniel? Pretty well. We're about to start paving the road. That's great. Yes, but there's a problem. We might not have enough asphalt. Find out and let me know. That way I can order some more. OK. What's the best way to contact you? I'll be around the site for a while, so you could contact me on the two-way radio or just send me an email. All right. I'll do that. Claire, have you completed the CBR test on that silt area? Yes, we just got the results back. Good. How did it go? I have good news. The silt soil is actually stronger than we originally thought. That's great to hear. So we can use it as a subgrade after all? Yes. It shouldn't be a problem. Excellent. Do you have any more tests to do? Just a couple more on the clay. I'll give you a call when I have those results. What do you think of the plan for Highway 28? It's not the greatest. The area has rolling hills. To keep the road level, we'll need to build around them. So there will be plenty of bends and sharp turns. That's right. Would it be better to build near Eagle Lake? Much better, actually. Aside from the lake, the area is flat. Will we have to build a bridge over the lake? That won't be necessary. We can build the highway next to the lake. Josh, how is the Highway 35 expansion coming? Well, it was going great until yesterday. Really? What happened? We got as far as two kilometres from the end of the expansion. Then we ran into trouble. What kind of trouble? A problem with the landscape? Yeah, we reached a sharp rise. We planned on going over it, but it's too steep. So we'll curve the road around it? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Ms Norris, do you have the instruments ready for this afternoon's survey? I think so. Am I going by myself? I think that's best. Today you can do preliminary surveying. Oh, but that won't take up the whole day. It might. The site is fairly big. It'll take you a while to note the position of all the features. Is there anything special I should pay attention to? Yes, thanks for asking. Watch out for the slope of the field. It seemed pretty uneven. OK, will do. Then, of course, decide the location of the stations. That sounds good. I'll let you know how things go. Make sure you sketch everything. Feel free to give me a call if you have any questions. OK, I will. Hey, Eleanor. How are you? Fine, Jim. Did you get my email about the equipment? I did. Unfortunately, we're already using some of the items you wanted. OK, so what's available? We can give you the optical square and an optical level, but the laser level is out. That's too bad. Don't we have a digital level? That would be much more accurate. Well, we need that for an upcoming project. Could you be done with it before the end of next week? That doesn't give us much time, but we could probably return it by then. All right then, it's yours. Also, do you definitely need a total station? It would be helpful. We'd get our plans drawn out much faster. In that case, you can have it. Great. Hi, Mark. Do you have a minute? Sure, Kate. What's going on? It's this plan. There seems to be a lot of emphasis on the hill here. What do you mean? It just seems that the vertical scale is a little distorted. The vertical scale has a 1 to 100 ratio compared to the horizontal scale. It has a 1 to 500 ratio. We wanted to make sure we stress the elevation. Why is that? Is there really that much difference in elevation from the bottom of the hill to the top? The hill is higher than it is wide. It's a pretty steep slope. There are important details for the road along the slope. OK, it looked a little weird to me at first. Don't worry, it looks that way for a reason. Any more questions? No, not right now. Thanks.
Good morning, Ms. White. What are we working on today? Hi, Jack. Today we're setting out a line. Okay, I'd like to start right away. Where are the supplies? They're in the truck. We have steel pins and everything else you need. Wait, are we setting out one or two lines today? We'll start with one. Line two will take off from line one later. Sounds good. So it's just a simple straight line. Not exactly. The road path is a straight line, but it's over that big hill. I see. So we'll use repeated alignment. Yes, definitely. Make sure the other workers understand too. Sure, I'll talk to them. I'm going to grab the supplies. No problem. Let me know if you have any questions. Yarrow and Sons, how can I help you? Hi, I'm putting in a new parking lot behind my hotel. How much does it cost to excavate a three-acre area? I'll need to know what kind of site clearance we're looking at. What's on the site now? There's an old children's playground on that land, and a small tool shed. Okay, so we'll have to clear the shed and the play equipment. Are there any trees or shrubs? No, our gardener cleared all the landscaping already. Is the area pretty flat? For the most part, but there is a small hill in one corner that needs to be milled. Okay, give me just a few moments to put together an estimate for you. Hey, Phyllis, have you looked at the plans for the new highway bypass? No. Why? Does everything look okay? I'm a little concerned about the land we're building on. Here, look at this map. What's the problem? The road will run right through this marsh. The soil is going to be very soft, and I don't think these plans include the right materials. Yeah, you're right. We don't want the new road to have a poor load-bearing capacity. It's going to get a lot of traffic. What do you think we should do? Well, we could try fascine construction. That would solidify the surface in preparation for the road. Good idea. What about lime stabilization too? It can't hurt. Anything that hardens up that soil will help. Mrs. Thomas, I'm glad you could come in. My pleasure. So, what are we looking at? Well, that storm really messed up our drainage. Yes, I saw the standing water. What's wrong with the sewer system? There must be some obstructions. I can clear those, but shouldn't they reach self-cleansing velocity? Normally, yes, but the drainage area is overflowed. Too much trash and mud got into the sewer. I see. Well, where should I start? Unfortunately, the manholes in a lot of areas are underwater. That's no problem. Just find one that's clear. We have equipment that can take care of the rest. That's great news. We want to get our roads clear soon. Then let's get started. Hey, Nancy. I want to check something with you. Sure, Mark. What's up? Those joints came in, right? No, they're not due for a few days. Hold on. I thought they'd be coming sooner. No, not until tomorrow at the earliest. Did you already start installing the pipes? Yeah, but we need the joints to continue. Should we hold off on other parts of the street then? Yes, don't install any other pipes for now. Okay, I can do that. But what should we do until the joints arrive? Hmm, we still need to dig the trench. Got it. We'll dig a trench for the rest of the line. And when that's done, the joints should be here. Hi, Miss Peters. Do you have a minute to discuss the land drain on Elm Street? Sure. Is there something wrong with it? There is. It overflows every time it rains. Okay. So, what do you propose we do about it? I say we install a pipe under drain. It'll soak up the water before it has a chance to flood. What do you think? I can't say that I agree. No. What do you recommend then? Well, what are the drain's dimensions? It's two feet deep and three feet across. I think we should enlarge it, maybe to three feet by four feet. I guess that could work. How long would it take? I'm not sure. I'll look into it this afternoon. Excuse me, Miss Jackson. Yes, Mike. What can I do for you? 
Well, I'm wondering about the Tenth Street project. Is that starting soon? Actually, yes. Now that we've finished the planning stage, the team will start laying the pavement. Okay, so we'll lay the sub-base course first. No, that's not quite right. You'll need to lay the capping layer first. Oh right, I forgot that the subgrade course is too weak. Right. Let me make sure I've got this right. Then the base comes after the capping layer. Then the wearing and binder courses come next. No, that's the wrong order. You switch the binder and wearing courses. It's just the opposite. Okay, it's the binder course, then the wearing course. Got it. Hi, Mr. Dean. Do you have a second to go over the Elm Street project? Of course. What's on your mind? I'm just checking that I have things right. We have to determine the design life first, correct? That's correct. And you want a report of the traffic growth and load? Yes, we can't move forward without that. When would you like that? Please have that to me by Friday. Okay. And the next stage is planning the design thickness, right? Right again. We have to know that before we can start construction. What do you need to know to do that? Well, first we'll need to determine what type of vehicles we'll be using the road. I'll include that with the report on traffic load then. Sounds good. Thanks. Bill, can we talk for a moment in my office? Yeah, of course. Is something wrong? Well, there is a small problem. I got the inspection report on Highway 95 back from the Department of Transportation. Oh no! I thought we did a great job. It's not that bad. The good news is that the friction test came out well. They're also very happy with the appearance of the road. Good. I'm glad. But what's the bad news? The bad news is the polished stone value. What's wrong? The investigator is worried about abrasion wearing down the asphalt and making it dangerous. That's not good. How can we fix it? We'll just have to watch the condition of the road. If it gets bad, we'll have to repair it. Okay. Keep me updated on any changes. What's the problem, Shelley? You look worried. I drove down Washington Street earlier today. It's not looking good. What's wrong? I haven't seen it since last fall. The winter weather caused a lot of damage. I'm not surprised. The temperature kept dropping and then rising again. What kinds of defects did you see? There was a lot of block cracking. It's not too bad yet, but I also saw the start of some bleeding. That's not good. Take your crew out there as soon as you finish on Jackson Street. It will be a while before we're done with Jackson Street. The rutting is pretty bad. Is it dangerous? No, not yet. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, I'll send another crew to Washington Street in the meantime. Good. It needs it. Mr. Hartman, did you visit the Wellington Street project this morning? I stopped by earlier. All of the concrete is poured. That's excellent. Is the sealant placed yet? No, but the joint grooves are almost ready. They were washing them this morning. I'm glad to hear it. Everything's going smoothly. We might finish the entire project by fall. How about the Green Street project? Is it going well? I'm afraid not. The engineers are still redesigning the joints. It's starting to get pretty expensive. What if we use jointed reinforced concrete? Would that be cheaper than URC? Not at all. The price of steel is rising, so using reinforced concrete would be more expensive. I see. Is there any way to cut costs? I have a few ideas, but we'll talk about that later. Hi, Ted. Do you have a minute to go over this checklist with me? Sure, Miss Jones. What is it for? Just making sure the concrete is laid correctly. Sure. What can I tell you? First, you performed the slump test. Yes, I took care of that before we laid the concrete. Good. I'll check that off. Did you place expansion joints? Yes, I saw Mr. Shaw's instructions. Good to know. Okay. Up next is tamping. Has the crew started that yet? 
No, not yet. We were about to start. Sounds good. Be sure to let me know when you strike the formwork. I want to examine the final product. Of course, I'll check in with you later. Leonard Construction, Conrad speaking. Hi, Conrad. It's Sarah Adams at the City Planner's office. I got your email, but I have a few questions. Okay, what can I tell you? Well, you mentioned a barrier curb. What exactly is that? Oh, a barrier curb goes between lanes of traffic. It's strong enough to stop cars from crossing over it. I see. That's what I thought. But how is that different from a vertical curb? A vertical curb isn't as strong as a barrier curb. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Did you say it isn't as long as a barrier curb?、Uh, no, you misheard me. Vertical curbs aren't as strong as barrier curbs. Got it. So they can't be used for the same jobs. Definitely not. It wouldn't be safe. Understood. Was there anything else? Yes, one thing. You suggested cut stone curbs for the residential project. I did. It would look great. Yes, but unfortunately, we don't have the budget for that. Well, a standard curb and gutter would work as well. Jim, are you ready to try your first curb installation? Yes. I've been watching the other workers. I'm ready to give it a shot. Okay. Tell me what you're going to do first. Well, the curb bed is already laid, so all I need to do is make sure the curb is positioned correctly along the curb line. Aren't you forgetting something? Hmm. Let me see. Oh, do I need to put in a haunch? No, that comes later. I'll give you a hint. What holds the curb in the curb bed? When the concrete dries, it will secure the curb, right? No, that's only the case in wet beds. This is a dry bed. Oh, I see. So it needs bonding. That's right. You'll need to use the epoxy resin to bond the curb to the curb bed. Got it. I'll remember that next time. Good morning. Welcome to Jackson and Sons. How can I help you? Hello. I'm a city planner for the mayor's office, and we're looking at redoing some city sidewalks. I'm glad you chose to come here. Are these urban or residential sidewalks? Some of both. I wanted to talk about prices. Sure. Well, it depends on the material. I assume you want concrete. Yes. Do you have different types of concrete paving slabs? Of course. We work with both hydraulically pressed slabs and open mould slabs. What's the difference in cost? Hydraulically pressed slabs go for about six dollars per square foot. And how about open mould slabs? Those will run you more like ten dollars per square foot. Are there advantages with open mould slabs? Well, you can add different colours and textures. Hmm. Is one of them stronger than the other? Yes. Hydraulically pressed slabs are usually stronger. Open mould slabs can be more decorative. Okay, we'll probably use hydraulically pressed slabs, but I need to check with my supervisor before we make an order. So, Miss Andrews, it says on your application that you used to work for GMA Engineering. That's right. I headed several bridge design projects there. That's excellent. What types of projects did you handle? Well, for my last project, I was the lead engineer on the Unibar bridge construction. That's a suspension bridge, isn't it? Yes, it replaced the old beam bridge across the bay. The county needed something that could handle much higher traffic flow. Wow, we do need someone with that kind of experience. That must have been a major project. It was. We made it a double deck bridge with northbound traffic above and southbound traffic below. Our upcoming project is actually a movable bridge that needs to accommodate passing boats. Are you prepared to take on a project like that? I don't have a lot of experience with movable bridges, but I'm eager to learn. Well, that's something we like to see too. Ms. Roy, I've got your inspection report here. Great. Were there any problems? Yes, a few actually. The deck, lanes, and parapet need work. 
What's wrong with them? The lanes are too narrow, the deck has cracks, and the parapet is too short. Okay. What about the lanes? We'll need to widen them. Yes, right now they're not wide enough to meet new safety codes. Of course, I'm glad you noticed that. What should we work on first? Since it will probably be the most work, I'd start with the deck and lanes. Okay. Should we just repaint the pavement that's already there? No, you should relay the whole road. Really? Are you sure that's necessary? Absolutely. The cracks in the concrete are too severe. All right then. That's what we'll do. Thomas, you're leading the fence installation on Route Seven, yes? Yes, Miss Allen, I am. What progress have you made so far? We worked on the first quarter mile yesterday. We finished digging the holes for the posts, but we didn't have enough timber to finish the fence. You're kidding! Didn't we order enough? We did, but part of the shipment was delayed. So what are you going to do today? Well, we need to stay on schedule, so we'll go with Plan B and start installing the posts. Good. You can go back and finish building the fence when the rest of the timber gets here. That's what I thought too. But what should we do if we finish installing the posts? Hmm. I think the best thing would be to move on with more post holes. That's a good idea. After all, we have miles of fence to set. Good. Are you having any other problems or delays? No. The rest of the project is on track. Good morning, Randy. Can we chat about the Highway 58 construction site? Hi, Melissa. Of course. What's on your mind? We're starting the project next week, and we'll need to do some safety checks. Sure, I've been looking into safety already. What do you need to know? I'm most concerned about power lines and gas lines. Okay, I talked with the electric company, and they say there are three power lines in the area. Is there anything underground? Yes, the electric company has one underground cable nearby. How about gas lines? They're checking the site today. They'll let me know by the end of the day. Good. When you find out. Draw up a map that notes where the lines are located. Sure, I'll get you a map by Wednesday at the latest. Great. After that, we'll go to the site and make sure those lines are marked. Sounds good. Dale, I heard there was an accident at the Third Street job today. I'm afraid so, ma'am, but it wasn't anything too serious. Well, I don't like to hear there was an accident, even a minor one, as you know. Any accident can lead to a lawsuit. I don't think we did anything wrong, ma'am. We set up the work zone according to the manual. I hope so. What happened? Well, a car collided with a traffic barrier in the right lane. So the right lane was closed. That's correct. We had a merging taper set up to get people into the left lane, but I guess this driver didn't realize until it was too late. How long was the merging taper? We used a five hundred foot taper. The speed limit on Third Street is only forty miles per hour, so that should have been enough. Plus, there was reflective tape on the barrier. Well, that sounds reasonable to me, but maybe you should increase the taper to seven hundred and fifty feet to be safe. Hi, Rosa. Did you get the order from the City of Huntsville? No, I haven't received the paperwork yet. No worries. I'll fill you in on the major stuff now. Okay. What's going on? First, we're shipping two stop signs. We're also adding a yield sign to the order. Got it. Are there any other signs on the order? Yes, a few more. There's a warning sign about icy conditions and two crossing signs. What kind of crossing signs do we need? Animal crossing signs? No, both are children crossing signs. They're going near a school. And that's it. Yeah, that will do it. Hello, Amanda Peterson, Brecken Construction. Ms. Peterson, it's John Parker. This is embarrassing, but I deleted your email with street furniture instructions. Mr. Parker, don't worry about the email. You called at a perfect time. We just got our permit for the project. Oh, that's great. Yes, we can begin work immediately. So where should I start? Well, I suggest you arrange the street and traffic lights first, then work out the details for the benches and trash cans. Okay, and then pick out the bollards next. 
They have to be both functional and attractive. Do we have a vendor? We do. We used him on our last project. Look at his catalogue and see if there are any that complement the site. We'll do. What about the highway project? What should we do there? If I were you, I would ask the engineers about the median barrier and guardrail lengths first. Got it. I'll call them right away. Thanks for calling Levy Chem Testing. How can I help you? Hi, this is Linda Wilson with Wilson's Paving. I need to have someone come out to examine a new batch of tar. I can schedule a visit to your batch plant this afternoon. What types of tests do you need? Well, I know we need to determine the viscosity. This tar is thicker than our usual stuff, since we're using it for an especially hard surface. Then we'll probably need to send a penetrometer, and since the tar is thicker than normal, it probably has a higher EVT. Right. So we need to know just how hot it should be before we start laying it. Okay, so we'll set you up for a ring and ball test as well. Great. Do you need me to prepare a sample before the tester arrives? No, just leave it to us. Our tester will determine the most appropriate way to extract a sample from your batch. Hi, this is Rachel with US Concrete Testing Services. How can I help you? Good morning. My name is Oliver Smith from Johansson's Construction and Building. You did some tests for my company. Hi, Mr. Smith. Yes, we completed your tests just the other day. Yes, we got your results. Thank you. But I've got a question. Of course. Let me look up your tests on the computer. Okay, ready. Well, it's just that we performed a slump test, and it collapsed. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you say it was slumped or collapsed? It collapsed, so we know that the concrete was too wet. Hmm. Okay, that's definitely a problem if the consistency is wrong. I agree, but the other tests were normal, right? Yes, that's true. Well, whatever the test results said, I can't use this concrete. No, sir. Not if it failed the slump test. We'll send a representative out to your site immediately. I was about to add more Portland cement to the mix. Should I hold off? I would. Our representative will run all the tests again. He should be able to tell you what went wrong. That way, you only have to correct the mix once. Okay, I'll wait then. Thanks. Good morning, David. How are you doing? Hey, Diane. I'm great. I'm guessing you're here to discuss the Larrabee Street Bridge repairs. Yes, I just read your report. The first problem is the scouring near the foundation. Right. We should address that immediately. I suggest using sandbags to fill the scarred areas. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. Another issue, though, is the spalled concrete on the deck. Yes, we need to take care of that too. First, you need to cut out the spalled concrete, then sandblast it. Right. And after sandblasting, we fill it with new concrete. Actually, I would suggest mortar. You only need to use new concrete for large areas. Really? Concrete is much stronger. I'm afraid that if we use mortar, the spalled concrete will just come back. Well, it really depends on the size of the area. Maybe we could just use concrete for any areas that are particularly large. That sounds fine to me. Great. For now, I think we're ready to begin. Hi, Karen. We should start thinking about Fifth Avenue. Good idea. That street needs major improvements. Yes, definitely. And it usually has heavy traffic. So, what do you think we should do first? Let's start with patching. The intersection at Fifth and Carlton Street is really problematic. I agree. Patching should be enough there. What else? We'll need to do some repainting as well. But what about bigger structural projects? We need to make structural changes on Fifth Avenue. Yeah, we'll have to widen some parts of the street. No, that's not right. You're thinking of Main Street. Sorry, my mistake. That is Main Street. But for Fifth Avenue, what are we doing? In my opinion, we need to resurface it downtown by the park. Okay, that section is pretty torn up. We could have one team work on patching. Another team can do resurfacing by the park. 
Sure, repainting can happen last when the other changes are finished. Good morning, Brighton City Hall. This is Janet. How can I help you? Hello, this is Phil Reynolds with Reynolds Contractors. Oh, great. Are you calling to discuss a highway maintenance bid? Yes, that's right. We can do a wide variety of maintenance projects. Are you interested in all three projects? We're very interested in helping with pressure grouting and retexturing. How about snow removal and de-icing? We don't specialise in that, although I'd be happy to help you find someone. Well, let's start by talking about retexturing. Yes, it looks like that's the biggest project. Which abrasion techniques do you typically use? We've got a lot of experience with both shot blasting and bush hammering. Great. Which one is more expensive? Hmm. The prices are very close between those two. Shot blasting costs could run higher, though. How is that determined? It depends on how much concrete has to be removed. The deeper we go and the larger the area, the higher the price.